Hi everyone, and welcome to the Curiosity Theorem. Today we're going to be solving another problem from the book 50 Challenging Problems in Probability. Nick is playing a three-set tennis match at his local club against his friend and a club champion. To win the match, Nick needs to win at least two out of the three sets in a row. The friend and the champion both play alternate sets. Should Nick choose to play friend, champion, friend, or champion, friend, champion to maximize his chances of success? I'm going to give you a chance to pause the video and try the problem out for yourself. All right, let's reveal the solution. Let's start by highlighting some of the important information in the question. We know that Nick needs to win at least two out of the three sets in a row. That means that he cannot win the match if he wins the first and third set, but not the second. Now, Nick must choose which order in which to play the friend and the champion. Let's now start by making some quick notation. Let's call the probability of Nick winning versus his friend, F, and the probability of Nick winning versus the champion, C. Further, let's state some assumptions about the question. We can assume that the champion is a better tennis player than the friend. Therefore, the probability F is strictly greater than the probability C. Next, let's assume that the sets are independent from each other. As a quick side note, this may not be the most realistic assumption, because we may see momentum or mean reversion behavior in reality due to sports psychology. For example, winning the first set may make you feel more confident, therefore leading to a higher chance of winning the second set. Alternatively, losing the first set may make you even more determined to win in the next set. In addition to sports psychology, we may also see momentum effects because of the effect of exhaustion. For example, a player with more stamina may have a higher probability of winning in later sets compared to a player with lower stamina. As you can see, the real world adds a lot of complexity, and therefore we're going to try to ignore it for now and stick with these simple assumptions. Alright, so let's extract out the most important information and see where we can go from here. Let's start by enumerating out the ways in which Nick can win in both situations. In the friend-champion-friend situation, Nick wins if he wins all three sets, the first two sets, or the last two sets. Next to this, we can write out the probabilities of all of these events occurring. Since the sets are independent, the probabilities of any of these individual scenarios is simply the product of winning each of the individual sets. Further, since winning a set and losing a set are the only two possible outcomes, as we cannot tie a set in this question, the probability of losing a set is simply 1 minus the probability of winning a set. Therefore, the probability that Nick wins, wins, and loses against friend, champion, friend is f times c times 1 minus f. Similarly, we can write out the probability for the lose, win, win case. We can follow the same set of steps to map out the probabilities for the champion, friend, champion case. Now, let's work to find the probabilities of winning the overall match given these set configurations. Remember, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B when A and B are mutually exclusive events. This is the case in our example, because Nick cannot both win all three sets and win only two sets and lose one. Therefore, we can simply add these probabilities to get the combined probability of winning the overall match given these two configurations. Now that we have the overall probabilities, let's work to compare them to each other. We can simplify out by cancelling out the f times c. This leaves us with 2 minus f and 2 minus c. Remembering our assumption that the probability f is greater than the probability c, we find that 2 minus f is strictly less than 2 minus c. Therefore, Nick has a higher chance of winning in the champion-friend-champion situation. This may seem a little counterintuitive at first. How can the probability of winning be higher in the situation where we're playing the champion, who is the better player, more often? The key insight to notice is that in all of our win situations, Nick needs to win the second set. Therefore, the second set is the most crucial of the three sets 
and it makes sense for us to put the weaker player in that second set. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you have any thoughts or questions. Bye!